Good morning. Here's our version of the break front cabinet. Now it's called a break front because the center portion of the cabinet is brought slightly forward from the rest of it, both at the top and at the bottom. When we went to antique stores looking for some inspiration, we found that they were either too large, wide and tall, or too ornate, very fancy muttons in the doors and a lot of inlay work. So I designed one that's a little bit smaller, that'll fit in just about any size dining room, where with these glass panels in the top, you can display your favorite china or glasses. The drawers give you plenty of room for the silverware and the table linens, and there's a little bit of storage on each end. I built ours out of poplar. Poplar is a little cheaper than pine. It machines beautifully, and it's a little bit more stable. It also takes paint great, which is what we're gonna do with this piece. Here I'm just dry fitting together a dust frame made out of three-quarter inch plywood. Now these frames do several things. They go right here, they join these side pieces together, they support the drawers, and they keep the drawer from tipping out as it's opened. There's also another frame all the way along the top of the cabinet. All I need is a table saw to make them. I've set the table saw up with my dado cutter, just the two outside blades. And I've set the height so that when I take a piece of the plywood and run it through, I get a half-inch groove that's centered on the piece. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly a quarter of an inch. I'll match the tenon to the size of the groove. Okay, now I'm going to add a couple chippers to give me the right tenon length. Here's a test piece, and the tenon is just a slip fit. That's what I want. Now I'll just run the pieces. When it comes to the assembly, a little bit of glue on the tenons and in the grooves. And I will clamp it just long enough to install a couple brads at each joint to secure it while the glue dries. Let's look at our prototype again. There are four vertical panels made up of glued up pieces of one by six poplar. I've cut them to the right size. There's one on the end, a pair in the middle, another one on the far end. In the center, the panel needs three dados for the plywood frames and one for the fixed bottom shelf. The top part of our brake front has a solid top. These little pieces here, which form the brake front, need a rabbit to receive the top, as well as the end panels. The back of the brake front is made up of quarter-inch birch plywood, and that adds a lot of rigidity to the piece. To conceal the edge so it doesn't show through the side, I've made a rabbit in all the side pieces. While I have the dado in the table saw, I've run some shallow dados in the fixed bottom shelf and on the underside of the plywood frame at the top, and that'll help me keep the brake front panels square. Let's look at the prototype again. There's a series of holes in the end panel, in the brake front, and in the lower cabinets to receive these little pins, which are actually gonna support the shelves. It's the subject of numerous emails that we get. How do I get a jig for these? Well, you can buy one that's already made. They're either plastic or aluminum, and sometimes wood, or you can make your own, like I did here, a piece of half-inch plywood with some 5 8 inch diameter holes, one inch on center, which match the collet on my router. Then you equip it with a quarter-inch bit. Now, for the panels, I want to make sure that the shelves will be level, so I lay out a horizontal line that's the same on all the pieces. Then I set a vertical line where I want the holes to go. And it's just a matter of routing them out. Let's look at our prototype again. The next step is to notch the bottom shelf to give us that break front. I like to make these cuts the table saw so that I get nice, straight, true cuts. 
Of course, the problem is I don't want to overcut these layout lines. So what I do is bring the saw up a couple inches above the table, slide the panel right up to one of the teeth, which is right even with the table surface, and then bring a line over to the fence. Now what I do is as I push the piece into the saw blade, when I reach my layout line, that's where I stop, and I won't have an overcut. Now I'm moving the fence over for the rip cut. And I always make sure that the waste material stays away from the saw blade. I don't want it to get caught between the fence and the blade. Okay, now I can finish it off with my jigsaw. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to show you the sequence of steps for assembling the base cabinet. First, these dust frames. Now I'll install the top frame. Let's see if it fits in place correctly. The clamp is only there to hold the pieces in place while I put these screws in. Now for the bottom shelf, and that's installed just like the top frame. Now one of the end panels. Now I'm ready to start working on the upper part of our break front cabinet. And if I tip this back, you can see that the countertop is part of the top section. That makes it easier to take it apart and move it around. The end panels and the little bump out pieces for the break front sit in stopped dados. I've laid out the stopped dados on the countertop. I've set up a straight edge clamp and I've installed a three quarter inch bit in my router. I just guide the router against the clamp. Okay, now that rabbit is going to receive the plywood back. Now that notch that I just nibbled away with the saw blade is necessary so that this break front piece will conceal the ends of the dados. The same thing happens on the end panels. Okay, let's see how that fits. <clears throat> That's going to be good. With a slightly different setup, I've made another small notch at the top of the brake front pieces so that the top can fit around. Now's the time to round over the edges for the countertop. I can't do that once it's assembled. If I want to use my router. All right, for the assembly process, drop in the ends first, and I'll attach it with some screws from underneath. Now the top sits in the rabbits, and I'll attach it with brads. 
All right, let's pop it back on this one. Now I'm starting to work on this cornice detail. The first thing to do is put in some rails onto which the pieces will be nailed. So I've taken some one by six, applied some glue on the ends, and we'll slide it in place and attach it with some nails. Now a rail that goes across the top of the brake front and we'll be ready to start some moldings. The first molding that I want to make is this lower one. It's not a stock molding that I could pick up at my home center. I could get the Scotia, but I'd have to make this piece to put on top of it. I happen to have a router bit called a multi-profile bit, which will do both in one pass. The next piece I want to mill is this piece. It's three quarters thick, seven eighths wide, and it has a little rabbit. I can do that at the router table. These pieces will complete the cornice. They go at the very top of the cabinet. The profile on the edge is exactly the same profile I used on the counter. The next piece is the one that goes between the lower and upper molding. It's mitered at the corners, and if you look at the section, it's beveled at 30 degrees on each side with the edges parallel to one another. All I need to do that is the table saw. While we're at it, let's make this piece. It's a Scotia molding that gets attached to the underside of the counter, and it gives it a look of a little more thickness. Okay, now the bit that I'm using is a half-inch cove bit. I've moved the piece closer to my miter box because I have numerous cuts to make on all these moldings, mitering them around the corners. I'll put some glue wherever the two pieces come together and attach it with some brads. And now I'm starting on the top piece of molding. And the risk here is that this joint is going to open up, but not if I put a biscuit and glue it in place. Now these bevel pieces are glued in place, no biscuits on the corners, just a few brads to hold it in place. Well, this is the last piece for the cornice. Let's put it up on the base and see what else we have to do. Okay, that's going to look fine. Now, before I leave tonight, I'm going to take this Scotia molding and install it on the underside of this counter. Tomorrow, we'll make doors and drawers and paint the project. Good morning. Come on in. I've been expecting you. Now, we got a lot done yesterday. This is a big project, and we have a lot to do today. I'm starting with this base, some one by six that wraps around the bottom. All the joints are glued, mitered, and held together with biscuits, just like the cornice. Clamps are a big help in pulling this joint together. Okay, now this half-inch quarter round dresses up the base. Now a few rails to cover all the edges of the exposed plywood. I just made a little tenon on the end to fit into the dado. If I don't install these three-quarter by three-quarter cleats, the drawer has a tendency to tip down as it's open. Well, now it's time to make the doors for our brake front. There are four doors at the top, 
which will have glass panels. And there's two doors at the bottom that have a plywood panel, a quarter inch plywood panel. There's a slight OG detail on the styles and rails. Let me show you how I make them. Let me show you how the door goes together. There's a style piece and a rail piece, and that's the connection between the two. I use a router bit set to make those two cuts. The one that's in the table now produces the cope cut on the ends of the rails. The one that's in the box still produces the groove and that OG detail that I showed you. I start by coping the ends of the rails. Okay, now I can swap bits, run a test sample, and then I'll run all the rails and styles. The reason this joint works so well is all the glue surface area. Between the cope and each side of the tenon, you have about six inches of surface area. If this was a panel door that I was assembling, at this point I would slip in the quarter inch plywood panel. Since this is the glass door, all I have to do is slip on the other style and clamp it up. Once the doors have dried, I want to remove some of the material from the original milling on the glass panel doors. To do that, I'm using my rabbiting bit. I want to make sure the bit tight in the collet, and I want to make sure the router is locked down, because if the bit drops, it's going to ruin my door. With the router, I'm left with these rounded corners. To clean them out, I'm just going to use a sharp chisel. All right, now it's time to build some drawers. They're made up of half-inch medium-density fiberboard with a plywood bottom. The first step is to put a groove in the four pieces for that bottom. With the dado widened to a half inch, I've now plowed out a groove in the side pieces to receive the back. Here I'm beginning to form the dovetail joint between the side pieces and the front. You've seen me use this dovetailing jig before. I set the fingers for the spacing I want. I've just run one of the side pieces, which creates the tails. Here I've mounted the draw front on the top of the jig, flipped the fingers over, and that allows me to machine the pins. Okay, now for the assembly, I put some glue on the pins and in the sockets, and just tap the pieces together. Okay, now I drop in the quarter inch plywood bottom. That's dry, no glue. And then slip the back piece in. Nail it up, and we'll be ready to make a draw front. The draw front that gets attached to the box is made up of a piece of three-quarter inch birch plywood, and then I wrap the edges with this poplar that has a rounded front. I make that over at the router station. I'm using a one-eighth inch radius beading bit. I take quarter inch stock, one pass is all it takes. A little glue on the pieces, and they get attached with brads. And I carefully miter each corner for a nice, tight fit. Now I just take the box, tip it up onto the draw front, line it up where I want, and tack it with a couple brads.
now that I know it's not going to move, I can pre-drill for some screws. Okay, let's try it out. That's good. Now I have a couple shelves to make for the top and for the bottom. That's pretty straightforward. We'll sand it up, bring it into the finishing room. You've heard us say this before. Whenever we paint a project, the first three steps are the most critical. A very good sanding of everything and just knock the corners off any sharp edges. Then make sure that it's totally dusted off with a tack rag and use a very good primer. I also want to make sure that the primer that I use is made by the same manufacturer that makes the final coat so that everything is compatible. Now after the primer dried, we sanded everything. And we like to use these sanding blocks. They come in all different shapes. This one has a bevel on the edge, it's rounded, square. It has foam on the inside and the abrasive is on the outside. They last a long time, they don't tend to clog up. So now we have a nice smooth base and I'm putting on the final coat, which is a gloss uh, latex. Now this exterior color is called Nantucket Gray. Inside the cabinet, we used ivory. And down here on the lower cabinets, we had a detail to deal with. And that was where to cut the line off between the exterior and interior color. So we chose the front edge of the door, put some masking tape on, and now we have a nice clean line. After I finish up the second coat, we'll be ready to put the doors back on. For the upper doors, I picked up some double strength glass from my local glass supplier, cut it a little bit smaller than the opening that we need, and I'm using this quarter inch quarter round mitered at the corners to hold it in place, held with some 5 eighths brads. Okay, now all I do is mark these for length, and if I tried to cut these with my power miter box, it would just tear the molding up. So I use this lion trimmer. It's a bit like a guillotine. Just cut it off and then move it up just a bit. and It'll shave off a tiny bit, which will give me a nice, tight joint. OK, a couple knobs on each of the drawers, the knobs on the doors, and the adjustable shelves installed you're looking at a break front cabinet. Now if you take your time and you do careful joinery, I'm sure that you can get results as good as these.